Hello, welcome to Attention Ginge. Now today is the day I finally get to start building my saltwater pond. I've pretty much got everything I need. I've got all the wood, I've got all the screws, the glue and everything I'm going to be using. Um, so I should be able to get the main part of this built today. So I should be able to get the whole frame put together. Um, and then I do need to wait for a few more materials like the balls and things like that to the board it all out. But for now, at least I can get the majority of it done. Um, Took a while to clear this area because this was just like a, a dumping ground over here. I just had loads of crap stuffed in this corner. But yeah, I've cleared that out of the way. I've had a little bit of spillage that you're probably going to see. I was soaking, I'll show you down there. I was soaking some uh, coconut bedding for my snakes. And I like to soak my coconut just for uh, probably about 10, 15 minutes. I like to put a little bit in the bag. Hot, well not hot, but just uh, a warm water. Just sort of absorb it into all the coconut. I just think it breaks down a little bit easier. I didn't realise there was a hole in the bag, so I've got a nice little patch there where it's leaked, but that'll be fine, I can dry that out and it's not going to cause an issue anyway. So, all I've got to quickly do is got to hoover this area, and then I can start getting all the wood ready, measuring everything to size, and start building. That's going to be quite tricky because this floor isn't perfectly level, it's sort of, it goes down at a slant in sort of this angle over here, so it sort of slants downwards this way a little bit. When I was doing the base for this, to level it all out it wasn't um, a great job it was the first time i'd ever leveled something out so the concrete underneath this isn't a hundred percent flat but i'm sure it'll make do and if it does have that gradual slope that just means that when i put the return pump which is going to be in this corner hopefully all the debris and everything is going to float down to this end and get sucked up anyway which is kind of like in a koi pond in koi ponds they have like a sloping bit that goes to a bottom drain in the middle just so that everything floats down basically so we'll hopefully be that kind of thing but it just means that I can't just cut all these bits exactly the same length the uprights and things like that um, I'm gonna have to put one I'm gonna start in this corner and that's gonna be my main start feature so first panel is gonna go in there and then I'll be using a spirit level to make sure this is dead level to here make sure it's dead level to there and then across this way to this corner and so on so I'm not gonna make this a tutorial video just because I don't really know what I'm doing what well, I do know what I'm doing I've got I've got a rough idea of what I'm doing, but I wouldn't take it as gospel as this is how you should do it because you think there's going to be, it's a large volume of water in here. Let me just show you how big it's going to be. I've put a mat down just because I don't want to lay in that nasty bit, but I'm just going to lay there just so you can see the sort of size of it to me. So, it's not bad, is it? I'll go for a little swim in here, have a little dip every now and then. So that gives you a rough estimate of sort of how big this pond is going to be. So like I said, it is about six foot long. Um, it's probably about just about three and a half, maybe three, three and a quarter feet wide. And it's going to be about three, again, three and a three and a three quarters, maybe. Yeah, about three and a half, three and three quarters deep. So it's going to be a large area. Now this isn't going to be the forever home for these fish. Um, eventually I do plan on getting somewhere that's a lot bigger and that way I can extend and this thing will be like the whole length of this. So this whole thing is like what, six, 12, I wanna say this is probably about 14 foot long. Um, like I have a saltwater pond that was 14 foot long, that'd be absolutely incredible. But that's something further down the line. Same with the freshwater tank. As you can see, I've got the markings up on the wall. So you can kind of see there's like, there's a line there and the line goes all the way around to here so this is going to be a big six foot uh, freshwater tank going along here again it's not going to be permanent it's, it will do me for a good sort of five six years while i'm growing the fish up eventually i will need to upgrade and hopefully by then i'll have something in place i may even no i'm not going i'll keep the snakes i was gonna say if i got rid of a few snakes i could just extend it even more but no it's not gonna happen so yeah that's the plan so all I'm going to do is now I'm going to start measuring. I've got rough measurements, but I think you should always measure as much as you can before you start cutting wood. You don't want to be wasting material. So I'm going to get all this measured up and I'm going to hopefully get majority of this done today. It's, uh, I don't even know what the time is. What's the time? It's currently 11.20 in the morning. Um, I just had to do a quick run to B&Q just to get some screws and I wanted to get some more wood glue. I've got some proper Gorilla wood glue. So hopefully that should do the job. And yeah. I'm a little bit nervous about building it because I'm trying to build this thing as bomb proof as I can. I want it to be absolutely solid. I don't want this suddenly bursting and two and a half, three thousand litres of salt water just absolutely floods my snake room. So 
that's that's one of the things I'm worried about but I'm pretty sure I've got it's it's to the size where I think it's manageable um, I think if I was going maybe another two or three foot that's when I'll probably start hitting some issues um, but I think this sort of thing it, it should be fine for what I'm doing so let's crack on and get it done so I've got the wooden uh, base frame in place uh, I'm not going to screw anything down because I need to actually make these side panels individually before I attach them together and drill this into the floor. Um, just because I need to get from below this, I want to drill upwards into the beams that come up. Oh, I'm out of breath because I've been running backwards and forwards, but <clears throat> it's looking good. And it does, you can see it, the wood I'm using is pretty heavy duty. Um, this wood is, let me see if I can zoom in on this and focus. So you can see this is the wood I'm using, CLS Timber. Uh, so its thickness is 38 millimeters. Its width is 89, so it's 89 millimeters this way. It's 38 millimeters this way. And they're 2.4 uh, meter lengths, I believe, yeah. So that's the wood I'm using. And I wanted something that was gonna be proper girthy, basically. I wanted something that was gonna be able to stand up, because you think that's a, a large volume of water. Um, so I, I wanted something that was gonna hold up to it. I originally was gonna use, oh, you can see, this is like a pile of timber that I had left over from other builds. This is the wood I was going to use. So you can see the difference in, in width. You can see this has got like another sort of 15 uh, mil on it, maybe even 18 mil wider. It's the same thickness as this wood. So this is the same, it's just more wide. But I just, this probably would have done it. This is probably pushing it for this sort of size pond. Um, I wouldn't have gone any smaller than this otherwise I really think either this would rip out or the like the screws at the end there I think this wood would probably just split and, and release the cracking as they say and water would go everywhere so this is probably as thin as I would have gone but I just I just want this to be as bomb proof as possible basically because there's a lot of money in this room that I don't want to lose so I decided to upgrade to slightly thicker wood and you think this for this wood to bend this way so for it to bend that way that is a huge amount of pressure that's going to be on that and you think it's going to have this top piece of the bomb it's going to have the uprights coming up i'm going to have support beams in between all them little uprights sort of zigzagged up and down for support and when it comes to the top uh, there's going to be the top layer which is going to be this then the pond line is going to fold over that and then i've got some thicker wood which is this stuff which is pretty hefty um, and it's it's a little bit thicker, a little bit denser. I don't know what it is, but I've had it lying around for ages. And this is going to go on the very, very top, and that's just going to mean there's two layers basically of this. As you can see, there's two layers of that. And for this to bend, that you'd need an immense amount of strength to try and bend that. And I think that's what's going to keep this pond straight. It's not going to let the sides bow, and that's going to give it the structural integrity that I need. Um, like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going off videos that I've seen and what I think works. So that's that base layer done. So now what I'm doing is I'm gonna start working on this back wall. This plug socket is gonna be an absolute pain in the ass. I might have to get somewhere and see if I can get this moved to here because there's gonna be a, a space around here somewhere. Or I might even see if I can get it moved up to here on this wall. Um, but for me, I'm gonna to have to work around it. I can't really unplug it. Because this, as you can see, all this dodgy wiring. If you keep snakes, you've probably seen this a ton. This is just like a, a makeshift thing for now until my heating cable arrives. But yeah, this is my, my lifeline that's keeping all my snakes alive. So, even though it's pretty warm in here, it's, what's this, temperature is 81.4 in here at the minute. So it's, it's pretty warm and I'm absolutely sweating, hence why I'm in shorts. But yeah, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to start working on this back panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this corner post, get that up. And then I'm gonna work on this corner post, get that up, and then hopefully I'll be able to put my spirit level along here so that this post is exactly the same uh, level as this one. That's gonna be the challenging part. I'm gonna have to take my time doing it, but um, it's like anything when you're doing this sort of work. Measure twice, cut once, make sure you do it right. So as you can see, I've got a bit lazy painting that wall. I thought this is all gonna be hidden beyond the pond, so there's no point painting it. I probably should have painted it, but Nah, it's not gonna happen. I do need to finish painting this bit along here though. So yeah, anyway, let's get uh let's try and get this back panel in place. 
So that was really awkward. But as you can see, this is what I'm sort of working off. So I've done that corner panel. Now I'm going off that as my uh, level, if you will. So I want everything to be level with that panel. So I've got the straight bit wood. I had to check this bit wood straight. I was checking all these bits and they're all bendy and God, it was just awkward to find a good piece. But that piece goes along there and then you can see my other corner piece going there. Now this uh, isn't actually going all the way to the corner. So you can see down there, I've got it just on that joint. That's where this beam is actually going to finish. Um, and that's because when I put the sheet boarding that goes on the inside of this, I need that sheet boarding to have something to lean up against on there. If I push that all the way back, this corner of wood might just flop in with the weight of the water. So I need to make sure I've got something for it to, to sit on. And also that means I can actually join this beam to the next beam that's joining this corner. So you can see it's overlapped slightly there. And uh, that's absolutely fine. The wood that goes on the outside here will be boarded to the main piece, so that's not an issue, and it's in the corner, so you, you won't see it. Um, same when it comes to these corner pieces, the outside pieces will actually lap together, so they'll be sort of supporting each other. It's literally just the inside that is bearing all the weight, basically, so that's why I'm building it just like that. So, yeah, that's that one piece done. So the next thing I need to do is I need to measure another one of these pieces. So I'm gonna make the top piece for this. So I'm literally gonna make it exactly the same length as this bottom piece. That's gonna go on the top, and then what I'll do is I will probably fix them all together, and then I'll start working on the uh, individual beams that go along. I think I measured, I can't remember the distance. I've got the distance written down, but I'm gonna have uh, the two end pieces and then there's going to be eight structural beams in between that so it's going to be a lot might be seven I'm not sure I can't, it's eight, seven or eight I'll have, have a look at my uh, my drawing but that's basically going to be evenly spread out hopefully distributing all the load and then I'll have the small cross braces in between um, supporting everything and for them small cross braces rather than using this big thick wood I'm probably going to be using these off cuts that I've got and things like that just because it's otherwise that's just going to be a waste of wood so I'm going to make sure I recycle all that stuff because that's all from previous tanks and if you, this uh, rectangular bit here used to hold this tank up there so <laughs> you can see how much stuff moves around I'm constantly changing but yeah so I'm going to make sure I reuse all that wood just because it puts it to good use um, and it is decent wood so there's no point wasting it so yeah I'm going to get that top beam up start measuring these in between struts and um, hopefully we'll get this back panel made and once this back panel is made I can actually glue it all up uh, get this screwed into the floor as well because I want it to be as structurally sound as possible I don't want this whole thing to be able to shift so it's actually going to be screwed to the floor as well so everything should be absolutely bulletproof absolutely solid So that's that back frame put in now. <laughs> Believe it or not, it might have been quick on the uh, the time lapse, but that actually took me just an hour. Well, I saved an hour. Obviously, I've done the bottom frame as well, um, and I've got that. I was wanting to make sure that this was dead level. So if I put the spirit level up, I hope I hope it's level. But it should be pretty much look at that. Pretty much bang in the middle. I don't think I could got that any straighter if I tried. So I needed this to be dead level because obviously like I said the floor is wonky um, and you can see as well when I started drawing this uh, the line as well doesn't go straight. This was just a rough drawing anyway but it's sort of coming out to where I wanted it to be um, and kind of eating set a bit of wood sticks over the line a little bit but end of day it's the same length so I'm not worried. And the other thing I needed to make sure was that these uprights are also dead straight there. So now I've got all that in. First thing I'm going to do is not knock that over. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to screw this bottom piece to the floor, um, and that's because you can kind of see. So you see, there's hardly any gap there, but when you get to over here, there is quite a big gap there, and it just shows how uneven the floor actually is. So for me to put these brace bits in up and down, if I was just to measure from top to bottom and put it in the weight of the tank that I'm putting on top of this would push that down and cause bending and stuff like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this down like probably 
three or four screws along here just so that is completely flat with the floor and then what I'll do is I'll measure in between here and here and that should give me uh, the perfect distance for the pieces I need for there keeping this top bit dead straight and um, once the weight of the tank goes on top that will push it all down and level it all out so that's the plan. I, I could just put some little shims underneath this, um, like some little pieces of wood just to wedge it. I don't want to do it incorrectly, basically I want to do it properly. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do next. So once I screw them down, I can start measuring these beams. I need to measure the distance between these two um, and then work out, because this is slightly changed from my drawing, I think. I didn't account for these bits being moved in slightly in the corners. So it's not going to be much out. Um, I'm probably still going to use the same amount, seven or eight beams across there, but I just need to work out that distance a bit more evenly so yeah on to getting this nice and supported So it's now quarter past one, so it's been roughly another hour and I've managed to get out. So that's what I'm aiming for. So that's one side. Now I've just got to do that again, <laughs> this side, and then the two end sides. Um, this still isn't 100% done either. I still want to put um, braces in between all of these. So I haven't got a small enough piece of wood to show you, but uh, I might have. Actually, yes, I have. So a little small piece of wood is going to go there. Um, and there's going to be one there, one down the bottom, one in the middle, two, one, two, one, all the way along. Um, might be a bit overkill, but like I said, I want this to be as bomb proof as possible. But yeah, we are slowly getting there. Now that it's sort of being built, the sort of size of it is, uh, is becoming a little bit more realistic. So this is going to be where the liner curves over here so the line's going to fold over and then another piece of wood is going to go on top sandwich that liner in place so the liner can't move and I'm literally probably going to have the water level up to here as long as I've got this all level but yeah the water level is going to pretty much be up to there um, so that the fish can come right up to this edge um, stingrays and things like that I'm going to have they're going to be able to come up and you're going to hand feed the stingrays the eels everything like that uh, what I might have to do no, no, no I'm gonna be painted don't I I was gonna say I might have to put a plastic uh, sheet along here just to protect this wood on top but I'm gonna be painting this wood and it's gonna be waterproof anyway so there's no worries about that getting wet plus this room is like 82 degrees all year round so any moisture anything that gets sort of splashed up the walls or on the floor like this floor here was all soaking wet because I've tipped a bucket all over it. it's now bone dry so this here you can see this wet patch here I told you about. This is basically bone dry now, it's just stained. So yeah, any water that does splash out, I'm not too worried, it is gonna dry pretty quick. That's why I'm not too worried about treating this wood, just cause all this is gonna be open. I'm not putting any insulation or anything like that. So if anything here does get damp, it should dry out pretty quickly. So yeah, but yeah, this is, this is getting pretty deep. So if I show you it on me, that's sort of getting quite deep now. So my hip bone, my waist is is here. So yes, that's that's pretty decent, that depth. I'm really happy with that. And this is obviously gonna give plenty of room for the fish and everything's near to swim around in. Now this isn't gonna be overstocked. Um, I'm gonna have two or three eels in here. I'm only gonna have one stingray just because I think if you've got one, you don't need two. Um, and then there's gonna be a couple of bigger fish. So I'm looking at getting a, a panther grouper um, maybe another type, I can't have too many groupers in here because they're quite territorial and they will fight so I'll probably limit to just two big groupers in here. I want to get a panther grouper because they look epic um, and I want to get another one that's really colourful and um, yeah I've got my lionfish, he'll be going in here, I only have one lionfish, um, I'll probably have like two or three other smaller fish swimming around so there's not going to be hundreds of fish in here but I just want a couple of very special unique fish in here if that makes sense. So now I've got this back piece done, I've got a load of uh, off cuts from this wood, so I'm gonna go outside, get them in place, cut them to length, wedge with them in place, and um, 
yeah, I'll, I'm not going to time lapse that because that's going to be boring. But yeah, I'll come back when all that is done. And that supports in. So I was going to do two there, then one in the middle. But I thought I don't know why, but I just feel like that was going to be a waste of wood. Um, and I thought that this is going to be just as strong. Um, and like I said, I do think it is overkill. I think this is going to be too much for it, but you can never have too much when you've got this much water sitting in your snake room. So yeah, that's that's taken a long, long time. Trying to get all these bits measured and lined up perfectly and, and put in place, it, it did take a while. But this side is now completely done. So that took me, what's the time now? The time is, oh, two o'clock. So what time did I start? 20 past 11. So that's taken me around, let's say about two and a half hours um, to get the perimeter cut and get that made. Um, yeah, that <laughs> that's two and a half hours down. Uh, probably another two and a half hours for this side, the long, other long side. And then it's probably going to be another sort of two and a half to three hours to get these sides done. Like I said, this room is not square. The floor is not level. So everything, I can't just copy this exactly. So if I do this exactly on this side, it's going to be completely out. So it's, everything is going to be completely different. All the measurements are going to be all over the place. Um, that's just the way it is at the end of the day. But it's, it is what it is. If I want it done properly, then I've got to spend the time building the foundation. It's like anything. If you build your foundation strong, everything else should just flourish on the way up. So now that this is done, um, I'm probably going to start on this side. Just because it's a little bit more accessible. Uh, this side is going to be a bit of a pain. So I've got all these wires and stuff I need to work out where I'm going to put these wires. I did unplug it just because it was getting in the way. Um, but like I said, this room is it's dropped down to 79, so that's not too bad. Um, it will warm up pretty quick, but yeah, I'll worry about that later. So I'm going to start on this one. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Oh, just knock the pegs off. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Um, it is going to have to be in a couple of parts because otherwise it's going to be like a 10 hour long video probably. Um, so at some point I probably will end it and start again for a part two but it's all part of the fun so i'm going to start making work on this side now again i'm not going to record it because it's basically exactly the same as what i've done here and it just makes the video a bit shorter so i'm going to basically copy this and get it there so should we do a little time jump i don't know if this is going to work let's try it so let's do a jump ready one two three jump boom there we go i don't know how, how slick that was but we'll soon see in the editing but yeah there we go so that is the second panel on. So you can see the sort of theme I'm going with now. And what I've actually done as well is because the, these walls aren't like 100% either, they're a little bit wonky. Um, I actually did all this plasterboard myself, yeah, as you can see by the massive dodgy crack down there. But it doesn't matter, it's all going to get hidden. Um, there is a brick wall behind this, then I've got wooden, stu uh, yeah, wooden studs that go up and down a bit, a bit like this that are actually screwed into the wall. Um, and then obviously plasterboard over the top of that. Um, cause this was sticking out, it was sort of, cause the wall's a bit warped and I think this wood's probably a bit out. Um, I've pushed it against it and I've put some mega screws that go all the way through there. And uh, I can just see, you can just see there, one of the dodgy screw holes that I filled. Um, I know there is a stud that runs down there. So I've put one big old screw into that and I've put one old big old screw into that. And this is solid. Uh, if it all falls down, it'll be because the wall crumbled or because the tank tips over and takes the pond down, rips the wall down and takes the neighbour's wall down. But yeah, it's all good. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it won't come to that. I'm hoping that the weight of this, so especially of the big six foot tank up here, pushing down because it's going to be sat on top of this with beams going across, that pushing down on top of this and all this structure, I'm hoping that's all going to be solid. Um, one of the things that I was really worried about was this front bowing um, because of the pressure of the water I was worried that there was going to be a bow in this um, and I've, I've thought about it in a couple of ways I might be able to fix that if there is a bow with it being minimal so obviously I don't want a great big beam of wood coming across um, the only thing I think of doing is maybe if it does bow I won't know until it's filled but if it does bow then have as a, a thin piece of metal it's kind of like this so these little strips of, I think it's cast iron or something like that. Um, this is what I use to actually hold up this big shelf. Don't look all this mess, oh God. But um, yeah, that's what I use to actually hold up this shelf. And it's really, really strong stuff. It's only thin. It's only sort of like 10 to 15 mil 
uh, wide, probably about four mil thick, but it is absolutely solid. And that takes the weight. I was actually standing on top of this and it takes my weight perfectly. I've got another one over there. So yeah, they're pretty strong. So all I'd do is I'd get a length of that and I'd put that across the middle of the pond, bolt it in both ends and then, oh God, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? What was I saying? Oh yeah, so I'll probably bolt it in there and there, there and there and have that beam across. And because it's only thin, it shouldn't obscure the view of the pond too much. But that's gonna be way down the line once I actually got all this filled up. I'm hoping it won't come to that, but if it needs it, then you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But to be honest, I think this is gonna be absolutely bomb proof. I don't wanna jinx myself, touch wood. But yeah, I think this is gonna be brilliant. So, got them two sides in. It's taken oof, probably about five hours in total. I did stop for lunch and stuff you got. Normally I, I probably wouldn't stop, I'd probably just work straight through, but I have to force myself sometimes to stop and eat and drink, otherwise I'll just keep working all the way through. So that is as far as I've got. Next, I'm going to be working on this big front piece now. Um, I was going to start on this side, but it's, it's a tricky one, because obviously I need to get all this. I need to get this corner level with that corner, this corner level with that corner, this side level, all these sides level. So. I think the best bet I've got of doing it, it's going to be easier to make this side first and then do this side and the cat's come to say hello. So yeah, that's what I'm going to work on next now. It is getting late. I'm probably only going to get half of this done to, uh, today. So I probably won't pick the camera up till tomorrow now. I'll probably get a bit of this done and um, yeah, show you the progress from there. And this is day one done. It has been a long, long day. It's now quarter, so 7.50, so it's 10 to 8 at night and I've just finished. I have been distracted a little bit. I was playing with my fish. Um, let me quickly show you them. I was playing with these guys. As you see, I've got a little target up here for them to shoot bugs off, so I have been playing with these. Um, so I will be, I think I'm doing a video. Yeah, this is probably the next video I'm gonna put out, so you should see a video on these guys next. But yeah, this is what it's looking like. This is how far I've got. You can see the room is an absolute mess. I've got stuff chucked everywhere. And you can see how much of a small gap. That's probably about a two foot gap maybe just over two foot that i have so uh, getting in between them snakes and that is going to be interesting when i'm feeding the stuff but it's all fun and pass or whatever it is i'm absolutely knackered but this is what i've managed to do now it's quite hard to get it all on camera because it, it it's a lot bigger than what it seems um now that i've finally built it and i've got the whole show up it it looks huge so i'm going to try and get a decent angle so you can see it all goes around there goes around to there and all of that. So this is everything that I've done. You can see I've got all the bracing in there, all the bracing on there. I've only just finished these uprights. So I've still got to go in between all these and do all the individual bracing parts there. And then the last thing I need to do, if I come right over this side, the last thing I need to do is just get that side put in. Um, and to be honest, I'm pretty happy with it. I wanted, remember I said I wanted to get all this dead level uh, I, I'm pretty much one or two mil out here and there and then I think the only corner that's bad is this corner uh, is about four millimeters out so when I lift the uh, spirit level up there's literally like a, a four mil maybe three and a half four mil gap which is fine but that I'm absolutely over the moon and to be honest once this gets filled with water I don't know how much this is going to shift it might shift a little bit so taking that into consideration as well might level it out might make it more on level i really do not know time will tell but yeah this is this is where i'm up to now and i'm absolutely knackered but as you can see it is very high um it is literally to a point where you have to rest your arm to look over it is quite deep and it's going to be interesting to see how much i'm actually going to be able to see in here so i'm going to be putting a liner in this it's going to be a black liner on the inside eventually and I'm going to be having white sand at the bottom so hopefully a lot of the fish should stick out against the side because it is black a lot of the fish I want in here are going to be bright and colorful it's not going to be any dark fish so you should be able to see them and hopefully I'm putting some underneath this fish tank where the brace is going to be I'm going to be putting some LED lights and they're going to be super super bright so that should illuminate everything in here so you can see it and obviously the white sand on the bottom as well is going to stick out so you'll be able to see the stingray and the eels and things like that so yeah that's that's where we are at filtration for this is going to be on the other side of this wall so i'm literally going to have a uh, 
pipe, the filtration, uh, the return pump is going to be in this corner, pumping water up and through this wall into the big uh, filtration area I've got out here, and then it's going to be coming back in through here and then blasting out into this direction, hopefully. So that is the plan. This filtration for the tank, that's going to be out here as well, so that'll all come further down the line, but yeah, it's just getting this big beast up and running. I still need to get this plug moved. I'm thinking about getting this plug moved to over here, uh, just above here. I'm gonna have it as like one of those water safety uh, boxes. You know, it's got like a box, and then a lid that comes and snaps down, and that's gonna be going out through this wall anyway and powering the stuff out here. Um, so that's where that's gonna be moved to. It's gonna be easy, just chisel that wall out and then pop it there and then I'm not going to worry about filling that hole I'm just going that's not going to be seen anyway and I'm going to have like some sort of splash back on here because of the water and stuff so it's all going to be hidden and yeah easy as that but yeah let me try and get a it's just honestly it's so big and with the room layout is this is about the best view I can give you that's it that's all you can see if this rack on the left here this wasn't in the way you'd be able to see the whole thing but yeah that's basically the best view I can give you for now. Well, I'm currently standing in the pond now, just cause there's nowhere else to stand really, cause it's just crap everywhere, but I'm absolutely shattered. Look at my pen. I forgot that was there. But yeah, I'm actually knackered. So I'm gonna call it a night and uh, probably have a little bit of a lay in tomorrow cause I am off tomorrow, thank God. Have a look, that's where that pen went. I've been looking for this all day and it was right. So yeah, I'm gonna have a bit of a lay in tomorrow. I think I'm gonna need it. Um, it should it probably take me about an hour to do this end panel, probably about half hour to do all these little in, in between brace study bits. And um, yeah, that'll be the shell completely done. Then it'll be a case of getting the board. I do need to go and pick that up, get all everything paneled out. And then once that's out, get the layer in here. Of, uh, I'm gonna be using this stuff. So this black matted stuff. I think I've got a couple of packs of this lying around. So I'm basically gonna use that as my padding. It'll be a little bit of insulation, which would be good. Um, and it's, it's nice and soft as well. So yeah, that should protect anything that's sticking through. I'll make sure I'll check it all. But yeah, that's gonna do it for now. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. It could be very long, it could be very short. Depends on how much I've got in it. I might divide this up into two videos. I'm not sure, but I'll have to jiggle around while I'm editing it and, and have a look. But yeah, technically I think that's part one done. Probably part one of 100, I, I really hope it's not. But yeah, it's part one done, so. I'm going to crack on tomorrow, carry on the filming, and um, yeah, make sure you stick around so you follow this build. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't shout at me telling me, oh, I've done this wrong, and I've done that wrong, and I should have done this, and I should have done that, because by the time you see this video, the majority of this would have been done, it would be too late. But nevertheless, if you do think I could have gone about a different way, or there's something I can do to improve it, please let me know, and um, yeah, I'll see what I can do. But yeah, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Cancel.